throughout life, there will be certain things that will be extremely difficult to obtain, but worth the effort. True love, the perfect pizza, a four-leaf clover, man tyke, a passionate hobby. Wait, wait, wait a second. If you find a perfect pizza, then you automatically have true love as well. Oh yeah, and Mantike is a pain in the nose pass to catch. And so are these other Pokemon on this list, because for today's Pokemon countdown, we are looking at the five Pokemon who are surprisingly difficult to catch. Actually, that's, uh, that's a kind of long name. Um, five hard to catch Pokemon? Uh, I guess that's better. I, uh, whatever. Now we have a few rules, of course, no legendary Pokemon because that is just way too easy, no starter Pokemon, and for the most part, no fully evolved Pokemon as they are typically hard to catch, if not impossible, in the wild anyways. So get your Ultra Balls ready, trainers, because let's start with number one. God, that was, that was so cheesy. I am, I am sorry. I'm sort of sorry. I'm not that sorry. Goldeen, Magikarp, Love Disk, and even Feebas all have high catch rates. I mean... A fish shouldn't be too difficult to catch, right? Just throw the rod in with a worm and wait for them to bite. Well, tell that to Basculin, a Pokemon that's only remembered because it comes in two colors also features a catch rate of 25. This is 25 out of 255, keep that in mind. Tied with Mantike and Mantine for being the hardest to catch non-legendary water type Pokemon. That's ridiculous, that's even more difficult than starter Pokemon. And why? Its stat total isn't even 500. I assume they wanted to make it a bit of a novelty Pokemon because of the colors, but Shellos isn't that hard to catch, so I don't really get the connection here. Oh well. I don't like most fish anyways, so whatever. So it seems like basic logic that an evolved Pokemon would be more difficult to catch than its pre-evolution counterpart. Well, apparently Murkrow did not get that message. This loud mimic Pokemon sports the same 30 catch rate as its evolution Honchkrow. I realize they were introduced in different generations, but to me that is no excuse. Though, I do actually like the idea of like the head Haunch going around with his little bro who's trying to mimic him, trying to be like the boss someday. Actually, scratch this whole entry, I want this to be canon now because that sounds adorably perfect. Alright, alright, never mind, restart. Welcome to 4 hard to catch Pokemon. Alright, so you may have picked up on some specific wording I used earlier, because we are actually going to have at least one fully evolved Pokemon on this list. With an impressive catch rate of 45, the same as starter Pokemon, evolutions, fossil Pokemon, pseudo-legendaries, and even some legendary Pokemon, it's Krikatoon! Yep, one of the most unimpressive Pokemon of all time, and this is coming from a bug type lover, is seen as an equal to some of the most popular and powerful Pokemon ever. It just completely baffles me that you would have an easier time catching an Arcanine than you would a Krikatoon. It just doesn't fit in with these Pokemon. In fact, the only group Krikatoon should ever belong in is a kick-ass facial hair club. Hmm, I should do a Pokemon countdown on that list. Okay, I lied, but through technicalities. Chimeco is a fully evolved Pokemon, but not originally. It found out it had a son later, like, one night stands happen, we get it, we just need to move on. But it still had a 45 catch rate before its pre-evolution, so I'm gonna count it. And this thing has caused me nightmares. So, let's go on a quick story time. When I was a Baboo, I was playing Pokemon Ruby, and at the same time I was watching the anime and James had a Chimeco, so I wanted one because it looked super cute. This is also before I learned just how bad and basically useless Chimeco is, so use suspension of disbelief here. But anyways, the only place you can find one is at the very top of Mount Pyre, and I spent hours searching for this thing, and several of those hours were in the wrong place because I was young and didn't fully understand where the summit started and where it ended and it wasn't really defined well in the game. And when I finally found it with its 2% encounter rate, 2% in one location in the entire game, I couldn't catch it. I ran out of Pokeballs and I've never forgiven Chimeco for that. And I likely never will. 
So you may have noticed a theme with this list, being most of the Pokemon aren't very good. Well, our final Pokemon continues that with a catch rate of 25, it's Cryagonal. You know the only things harder to catch than this snowflake? Legendary Pokemon, Volcarona, and the Beldum line. This glorified raindrop is more difficult to catch than Xerneas, a Pokemon that will cease to exist if you leave it in the sun too long, a Pokemon that will snap in half if you touch it with too much force. Actually, its defense really is 30, so that's actually a really nice touch, being a snowflake and all. Wait, no, 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 I will not praise this thing. Like Chimeco, it's stupid hard just to find as well. In Pokemon Black and White, you have a 1% chance to encounter this thing for 3 quarters of the year, and only a 5% chance during the winter. And for what? The only cool... <laughs> the only cool thing about Cragnall is that it learns Attract, and literally cannot use the move. Good job, Game Freak. Good job. Of course, there are a ton more Pokemon we can go over on this list, but this is just a little example of some of the ludicrously hard to catch Pokemon for absolutely no reason in the Pokemon world. But I think I'm going to go get to work on that facial hair video, so I will see you guys next time. Until then, I'm Hardy Tegelio.